Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's going to be a great full news show. Molly is back from her coronavirus vacation. I lived. You survived. You're back. You lasted eight days. You felt terrible. <laughs> you know, on the ninth day, already calling in sick in the second really, week. I really like Unbelievable. <laughs> I really but you're back. That's all that matters. <laughs> Uh, right up top. The big news story of uh, 2022. I mean, this may remain the biggest tech story of the year. It certainly... On January 18th, we started the year with a bang. For crying out loud, Microsoft announced that it's buying the troubled and yet historic game studio Activision Blizzard for $69 billion. We think it's like $75 billion all in that it'll end up being the biggest tech acquisition of all time if Federal regulators let it go through. We'll talk about that as well. Stick with us. It's going to be a great show. This Week in Startups is brought to you by Vanta. Compliance and security shouldn't be a deal breaker for startups to win new business. Vanta makes it easy for companies to get a SOC 2 report fast. Twist listeners can get $1,000 off for a limited time at vanta.com slash twist. Data IQ allows companies to leverage one central solution to design, deploy, and manage AI and analytic applications. Visit Data IQ to learn more. And Our Crowd helps you invest early in pre IPO companies alongside professional VCs. If you're interested in investing, you can join Our Crowd for free at slash twist. Okay, Microsoft has announced they would be acquiring Activision Blizzard in an all-cash deal for $75 billion. This would be Microsoft's largest acquisition ever, right after LinkedIn, which I think was right around the $29 to $30 million mark. Another incredible, incredible acquisition for Microsoft. Uh, Geek Wired, in fact, gave us this beautiful chart here to show just how meaningful this acquisition is. If you took the next couple of acquisitions and combined them, it wouldn't be as long as that blue bar for this pending uh, acquisition, Nuance, uh, which is the language company, Skype. We remember, uh, you know, that getting bought, GitHub, Nokia, other uh, things they bought over the years, Yammer, David Sachs's company. This is the equivalent of 75 Yammers. It's the equivalent of a half dozen Skypes, right? It's a, it's a very big. So why are they doing this? I think Microsoft would like to become Netflix for games. CEO Satya Nadell. Uh, said that back in January of 2019. Right now, the world has 3 billion gamers. I think that's out of 7 billion people on the planet. Uh, And Microsoft expects 1.5 billion more to be gaming in 2030. In other words, the majority of humans uh, enjoy gaming. Uh, And that's 4.5 billion gamers, uh, according to Microsoft. Let's throw to this 57-second clip. Um, And it's a lot of word salad, but after this 57 clip, 57 second clip i'd like to get your thoughts molly our vision is for a river of entertainment where the content and commerce flow freely driving a renaissance across the entire industry to make games more inclusive and accessible to all and together with activision blizzard that's what we will be able to deliver removing these barriers will only become more important as the digital and physical worlds come together and the metaverse platform develops When we think about our vision for what a metaverse can be, we believe there won't be a single centralized metaverse, and there shouldn't be. We need to support many metaverse platforms, as well as a robust ecosystem of content, commerce, and applications. In gaming, we see the metaverse as a collection of communities and individual identities anchored in strong content franchises accessible on every device a river a river okay a river. I- i'm assuming of was that money. satya nadell that was, was satya that a- nadella yeah, yeah satya nadella. nadella sorry w- what are your thoughts on this acquisition why now what's the background here uh, let's start there yeah i mean this is like i don't want to state the obvious here but this is big it is a big deal uh it's not just a big deal because it's a big crap ton of money i would actually really be curious to know um, little like real time assignment for our producers. What is the biggest tech acquisition ever and where this sits in that stack? Because this is a very big amount of money. Um, I think that you it, we tend to forget how 
quietly dominant Microsoft has been making itself in gaming over the years. Like Minecraft seemed like a big acquisition at the time, and we sort of had no idea. And Microsoft has very been been very quietly gobbling up game studios for the last few years and making more and more titles exclusive to Xbox. Like at some point, this company clearly said, Xbox is not a hobby for us. You know, it had, it had been kind of a side business and they went like, this is a way to keep, and they launched Game Pass. They've, they've put everything into this subscription model that just keeps recurring revenue over and over and over. There it is, consumer SaaS. Subscriptions consumer are SaaS. magical, whether it's Netflix or Spotify or Com, one of our investments, Steezy for Dance. And that's why we're obsessed with it as well. And, and people yeah. are obsessed with SaaS, like Slack. 100%. This would be the largest tech acquisition, I believe, ever. If you remember Dell bought EMC, uh, which was more like a merger, and that was $67 billion. Yeah. What, what are the games here? And how does this change gaming? Because you have... You know, the Microsoft platform, which is the default for desktop gaming. You have Xbox, which I believe is the largest console. And, uh, you know, they don't have a foothold on casual gaming on Android and mobile and iOS. Um, but what what are the names here? And, and you know, because you have Activision yeah. and Blizzard. We know Blizzard had like Diablo and some of those like. And World of Warcraft. And World of Warcraft. I a mean, lot the, of subscription stuff there, right? World of Warcraft, one of these original subscriptions. And also Overwatch, which was like huge oh, for huge. just a hot yeah. minute, you know? Yeah. Is Call of Duty in this cohort? But yes, exactly. That's what I'm getting to. The uh, big gorilla here is freaking Call of Duty. With uh, this acquisition, Microsoft has Halo and Call of Duty in mm. the same house. I mean, if they put Call of Duty on Game Pass to use to steal the phrase directly from my brother, that RIP PlayStation. Like, done. Got this it. is just massive for people who are into first-person shooters. Hardcore gamers have something to love here, big time, because Call of Duty, I think, might be the biggest game in the world. That's bananas. And then they also get Activision Blizzard bought King. I'm like so worked up because I can't oh, believe they have King Halo is and mobile. You're right. I forgot so about that. King is mobile. So all that's, of a sudden. That's Clash of Clans and Candy Crush. And Candy Crush. And right, Clash of Clans was the thing that uh, they were doing over there at King. That's a Scandinavian so. Crash country. Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. yeah. They also get Starcraft, which is a, you know, oh, yeah, was, was one of my e favorites. Big esports. Right? So that could be very powerful if they launch. Because I, I think the last Starcraft to come out was Starcraft 2. Like, I don't understand how they could have a franchise like StarCraft, Blizzard, and not release another one. That is like real-time strategy bonanza. And I, there was that, what was that game that came out that's real-time strategy that I think people got obsessed with that kind of replaced it? Mm, it'll come to me in a minute. Or maybe one of the noties will remember. Probably. Um, mm. Anyway, yeah. I, yeah. I, did, I mean, honestly, I think like for, Super for hardcore oh. gamers, this is all about Call of Duty, 100%. Yeah. And bringing those into the same fold and putting it all on that on uh, Game Pass. And and the question of what will they make exclusive and what won't how, they? How big is Game Pass? And then let's talk about exclusives after that. Because this reminds me of Disney Plus. If I was going to build an analogy, totally. Disney was selling their content, if you remember, to Netflix. That's why we had Daredevil and, you know, was it Jessica Jones and all these different you know, um, IP was licensed to Netflix, but then Disney came out with their own. So this feels analogous. SOC 2 compliance is critically important. Why? If you don't have SOC 2 tight, and tight is right, you can't close major customers. It's really that simple, folks. And guess what? Vanta's going to give you $1,000 off your SOC 2. Vanta's compliance software makes it really easy to get and renew your SOC 2. They continuously test against technical and non-technical SOC 2 requirements. They partner with over two dozen audit firms who have been trained to file SOC 2 reports directly within Vanta. And on average, Vanta customers are SOC 2 compliant in just two to four weeks. You can compare that to three to five months without Vanta. Balloon CEO Amanda Greenberg is one of our portfolio founders and she loves Vanta. Balloon sells a SaaS product and collaboration software to big enterprises and some medium-sized ones as well. And when they needed 10 documents in place within 48 hours to meet a deadline for one of those great enterprise deals, you know, the really high paying ones, Vanta saved the day by supplying customized templates and helping them through the process to successfully close the deal. Way to go with the assist, Vanta. So here's your CTA, the old call to action. Vanta will help you unlock bigger sales and they'll help give your employees back time to work on more business critical assignments. So get that $1,000 off right now, vanta.com slash twist. That's vanta.com slash twist, V-A-N-T-A dot com slash twist for $1,000 off. 
Game Pass has 25 million subscribers. What? That's its subscription. Yeah. I mean, again, this, these are the things you just don't think about, right? You're like, huh, is Microsoft big in gaming? I don't really know. Mm. Yeah. Turns out 25 million subscribers globally, and those numbers are as of today via GameSpot. And that's 10 bucks a month, I think. Yep. Something like that. Yep. I mean, I'm a subscriber. It's basically the replacement for Xbox Gold. But now mm-hmm. you get game downloads instead of spending 60 bucks a pop. So they obviously just pulled in a ton more excited subscribers. And then there's just the part. I mean, the part I find really interesting, aside from just the sheer, oh, my godness of it, right? The the dominance. I mean, this is like such an alpha play. I almost can't even believe it. But they also get Activision Blizzard at a time when its stock is down 30% because the, the you know, it's been kind of a shit show, right? They've had all oh, of these. Oh, they had all the scandals. So they've had was the stock scandals. depressed because of the scandals? Was that the headwind on the stock? I think that was a big part of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. they were sued by the state of California in June over this culture of, quote, constant sexual harassment. The California Department of Fair Employment and Housing said, you know, essentially, it's awful. There have been questions about whether the CEO was going to leave. And the thing that I was actually waiting for as this news sort of unfolded throughout the day was what is going to happen. And according to the Wall Street Journal, sources close to the deal said that Bobby Kotick, Activision's longtime CEO, is expected to leave after the deal closes which is expected, by the way, in Q1 2023, which leads to the other interesting part of this, which is like, really, though, do we really think the FTC and the DOJ, which just made an announcement today about how they're going to get a lot more hardcore at looking at big acquisitions, are going to let this go through easy peasy? What do you think? I think they'll let this one go through because it is tiny when compared to Microsoft's overall revenue and the other players in the space. I don't know that um, this one, you know, kills competition in gaming. I mean, it might kill PlayStation. I don't know, man. It did. Well, it depends on whether not America's these... problem. So, you know, here's one of the things with the thumb on the scale. Yeah. What presidents who appoint people <laughs> to do antitrust, right? This is a very political thing. Um, you know, Netflix didn't see, and Netflix and Google under Obama didn't seem to have any problems, right? And Apple and Google didn't have many problems under Trump. Yep. Um, and this is where it gets very complex. Do you want Microsoft to beat Sony? Well, America wants Microsoft to beat Sony. Um, and that would then, you know, if the if we are not we have no control over what Sony buys unless it was an American company I suppose but we have little control but do we really want to ankle do we really want to put sandbags and slow down Microsoft great American company in competing with global companies outside of our borders we don't mm-hmm. I can answer that question and you don't want to be the president uh, or the administration that is ankling American dominance and American exceptionalism globally in the face of, you know, other places like China, which have their finger on the scale and, and, and a dogged fight on a global basis. We need to win. America needs to win. And so this would be an example of just letting America win. If I had to make a bet, because I think there is concern about it. A uh, Twitter user, Tane Jaipuria, pointed out the Microsoft deal, who I think is a journalist, pointed out that the Microsoft deal to purchase Activision for $69 billion has a breakup fee of about $3 billion, mm. which I'm guessing is Who related pays it? to which uh, way? Activision. So that's not that's usually the other way around. So why is Activision doing $3 billion breakup? Yeah, why does Activision have to pay it? Generally, that's a good question, actually. Hold on, I'm looking. Usually it's the other way around. It, that would indicate that there are some risk factors on Blizzard's side. A breakup as fee or termination to, uh, Microsoft. Fee, yeah, is paid by the seller if the deal does not go through for whatever reason. So in this Usually case, Usually it's paid by the, the buyer. Like oh. if Microsoft was going to buy your small company, if it doesn't go through, mic- so this means the balance of power was with Microsoft and Microsoft got to extract this from Blizzard. Yeah. So that means Blizzard is the, trying to sell, and which I would think- indicate to me on game theory. Good. What's your game theory? Well, my theory is that that's related to either a huge settlement related to yes. sexual harassment, Correct. which would that's not be a shock, yeah. or a regulatory headwind. And if yeah. I had to guess, what I would imagine is that the FTC, I think you're totally right. They don't want to necessarily block this. The gaming sector is very vibrant just because there are really 
only two dominant consoles doesn't mean that it would, you know, be a massive monopoly that killed gaming, especially because PC yeah, gaming exists, gaming. which is massive. Yeah. I do think they might make Microsoft uh, give up some exclusivity. Like they might say, ah. you can't have COD be a Game Pass exclusive. So if you're doing COD on Xbox, you might be able to do an exclusive for three months or six months, but you can't ban Call of Duty from PlayStation. And are those, I wonder if which titles, like if they do own Halo, Halo is exclusive. Halo is exclusive. So you, if you want to play Halo, you got to have Xbox or a PC. You can't mm -hmm. do it on a Mac. You can't do it on PlayStation. Yeah. I'm or Nintendo. Sure. Yeah. So it's interesting. I think that, yeah, I agree with you. I think they need to get a big uh, ticket, a uh, big penalty for the, like, unbelievable track record, horrible track record like uh, with the harassment. Like, that seems to be systematic and going on forever and that they condone. See, this is one of the problems uh, with old school companies. Old school companies use the HR department to kind of just very quickly settle things. But if you settle things and you allow the perpetrators to stay at the company, which it seems like Activision Blizzard did, then you never change the culture. Yeah. And in fact, what you're doing is reinforcing the culture because the bad actors stay and the speeding tickets are so low. Imagine if like a speeding ticket of 90 miles an hour was $9. Everybody would go 90 miles an hour. So that's one of the problems in corporate America is that the penalties need to be you, you your career at this company is over maybe not career forever but you know we, we got to think about those things too like when does I mean, uh i can't believe and i if i worked for activision especially if i were a woman or a person of color or anybody from an underrepresented group i would be overjoyed at this because yeah, so microsoft's far, a great company yeah microsoft's a great company so far the board had been standing behind the ceo and if you go and read you know nick just posted this in our slack if you go read the lawsuit that was oh, filed in California, yeah, it makes your gross. stomach turn. It's gross. Yeah. No, it I've, is. I've, it and I mean, I've been around the tech industry this for is a about. long time. Like yeah. a lot of bad crap happens. It is yeah. appalling. So I'm thrilled, actually, that Microsoft is buying Activision Blizzard for lots of reasons, not least of which is I'm a Game Pass sub subscriber. <laughs> yeah. But also, I hope they just firebomb yeah. that executive level. Just I, that will clearly <laughs> happen. There's just no way those people make it over to the other side. They all just get, yeah. Yeah. P period, end of story. Can't. The potential for positive change with AI is huge, but seeing that value is hard. AI-driven growth is about organizational transformation, not just technology. And many businesses struggle with bringing AI initiatives to fruition. And that's where Data IQ comes in. Data IQ is the platform for everyday AI, systemizing the use of data for exceptional business results. At its core, Data IQ allows companies to leverage one central solution to design, deploy, and manage AI and analytics applications. And it's accessible for everyone, whether technical or on the business side. Data IQ also facilitates using pre-built components and automation wherever possible to streamline work processes, as well as consistent management and governance across teams and projects to create transparent, repeatable, and scalable AI and analytics programs. Visit DataIQ to learn more. That's D-A-T-A-I-K-U.com to learn more. Probably going to be great for consumers because now consumers for the same price get more. And this is the issue with the issue or maybe the feature, it could be a bug or a feature of our antitrust laws. So here's the thing about antitrust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is designed um, to protect against consumer harm. So when Disney decides, hey, we're going to buy Star Wars, Pixar, LucasArts, Star Wars, Marvel, everything. Mm -hmm. Does that harm consumers? What's the harm? Right. They're, I'm getting all of those for not seven bucks a month on mm -hmm. Disney Plus, there's no harm. And if they were to buy three or four more franchise, if they bought James Bond and got the whole franchise, whatever they buy, there's no harm. And As then we you look define at harm. Like we well, define consumer. harm in terms of prices, exactly. Specifically that very narrow lens versus yes. 
what the hell happens to game developers, as Beardscript pointed out with this acquisition. Right. And so that's where you have to think like maybe um, second order effects mm-hmm. are where you could start to see, well, in the future, there'll never be an Xbox competitor. There, is there ever going to be another console if, exactly, you know, and can there be another streaming platform to compete with Disney? Or can there be another theme park? It's kind of hard, right? Can you imagine going up as a streamer? And so we have this three horse race we've talked about before HBO, Disney, Netflix, and here we go. But now you're going to get Call of Duty as part of your $10 a month. You're going to get Diablo. You're going to get Candy Crush. You're going to get StarCraft 2 if you're like a nutcase like me and you still like to play a game from 15 years ago or 10 years ago. Hasn't been updated. It's kind of rad when you think about it. It's just like when we go to Amazon and then I'll hand it off to you. You know, I'm looking at Amazon and I was, uh, we were talking about that uh, house brand from India that people are obsessed with. What's it called? Solimino something. There's some house brand that's from India where you can get teeth whitening trips or vitamins so or wipes. Solimo? S-O-L-I-M-O. L-I-M-O. Huh. And it's like, okay, uh, is Amazon basic cables and Solimo better for consumers? Of course it is. Lower prices, you know, is better. And until you can't have second order. Go ahead. Until you can't, exactly. Until you can't get anything else, right? Until you're on Call of Duty 19 and a new game hasn't come out in six years. <laughs> and all the, mo- yeah. all the movies that exist in America are Avengers movies. And you may not have noticed that like Amazon Prime, those prices are going up. And maybe the price of Game Pass will go up over time. Yeah. Because eventually there will be, but it's such a hard argument. This is the bind that Lena Khan and the FTC are in and and that she's been arguing for years, even as a law student, which is, do we need to think differently about how we approach antitrust and how do you define, how do you prove a negative? How do you prove what you missed out on because there were only three streamers and because there was really only one viable you know, game future competition service. is a really hard thing, you know, yeah. to kind of like it's an abstract concept who will show up in the future. It's like, well, Facebook had Instagram, TikTok, WhatsApp, you know, Twitter, and countless other competitors show up. But that doesn't mean there won't be it w- it's not getting harder and harder mm-hmm. for the next Snapchat or TikTok to, to take hold. It is going to get harder. But yeah, like you said, it's a counterfactual and like, yeah, it's, it's really hard to, to figure out. But I kind of like the idea of letting American companies run because the bigger issue for us right now is can America remain dominant and have a balance sheet and a currency that is still the world currency for Ray Dalio's book? Can we still become the world? Can we still maintain our, our power in the world? And if we cede power, we all know who we're ceding power to. Uh, And that's what I would encourage Americans to think about. And it dovetails with discussions of human rights and democracy. If America doesn't win, maybe the dictators win and pick your poison. Mean, even though I really want to talk about Brian Chesky, what do we mean when we say America, let American companies run? Because if we mean we only let six of them run and we, I mean, small businesses are the middle class of the United States, right? Small businesses are the backbone, the part that's shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. There's huge. And there's like, micro like creators and there are small businesses struggling to hang on but that's always been where the strength and the power is and they're the ones who need room to run but if they run right into amazon or they run right into walmart or they run right into apple yeah you know i mean i think what you'd have to say is entrepreneurs are always going to come up with something better you know they're always going to come up with some new market and if you're fighting over you know owning a deli or a five and dime store or a grocery store like maybe that's not the battle to have right now, like fighting to compete against Walmart or fighting to compete against Amazon basics. Like maybe that's not worth fighting for. Maybe there's other places innovators can go to innovate and, and do other great things in the world. Everyone should but it just is a tough give question. up on their delis. I mean, listen, you could have whoa, whoa, a great, whoa. But, well, hold, let, let me, let me rephrase that. Oh, there goes my See, camera. even the camera right was like, no, nah, bro. To talk about you bagels. want to think through that one again. <laughs> I wanted to talk about bagels and I lost my camera. It's just so, <laughs> the world is so unfair. FML. Okay, listen, delis, I was probably out of line saying that. Here's the way to look at it. Yeah, some great Amazon basic bagels could take over. And when they do, that generic bagel cannot compete with 
some new local brand in Berkeley, Boy Chick Bagels, whatever it is, Boy that Chick makes Bagel. something absolutely refined and delightful. So it creates another opportunity, which is I'm not the generic cable. It's some unique cable in the world that does something different, right? And the, and the innovation cycle starts again. But, you know, winning as a country and letting these companies run means, I think, allowing them to continue to grow, making them pay taxes, making them pay great wages, right? So there are things we can do, which is the one thing I would argue Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren have done well, which is the pressure they put over a sustained period of time on all corporations to, or the country to raise the minimum wage was heard loud and clear by the people who were running hard. They heard it and they were like, huh, these people will keep complaining about us. AOC is complaining. This pro okay, what are they complaining about? Oh, how much we pay people? Well, could somebody just run a number here? What if we added four? What if we raised it 30%? Would they shut up? It's like, yeah, they got no choice but to shut up because we're they asked for a $12, $14, $15 minimum wage. Okay, pay everybody 18 bucks and shut them up. Oh, they want to pay for a community college? How much will that cost us? Oh, only one out of 20 people are going to do it and it's going to cost eight grand? Well, F and do it. And that's actually like, I think uh, what we're looking at, Molly, I think is a functional democracy and capitalistic society. People are complaining over here. People are taking action over here. Yeah. That's a vibrant debate and democracy at work. Or how a free awareness market. drives change. So as much as I complain about Senator Karen, I do give her credit for creating a dialogue around minimum wage, creating a Absolutely. dialogue around taxes. That, and you know what? We've seen people sell some shares and pay a lot of taxes. Record taxes have been getting paid the last couple of years. And let's talk about like corporate taxes. Like the Record. fact that corporations do not have a minimum and they can play shell games is yeah. unacceptable. It's insane. It's, it's insane. insane. Like just come up with a minimum tax. And I'm sorry, and, like- And no more every, loopholes. For every time you want to say, let American companies run, and then there's an American company who's not paying taxes, that's un-American. It's un-American. It's and un no more putting American to hide your revenue I, and not, yeah. you know, like we're, we've taken the reins off. Like our companies are largely unregulated compared to everybody everywhere yeah, else that's in why the we're world. winning. And then what do you do? You turn around and you don't invest in the schools and the human Ridiculous. beings and the people in the streets and the like mm, double barrel. Yeah, well, no, this whole concept that they're like, listen, God, God love, you know, my home country of Ireland. But they're like, yeah. Just set up a company here, put Google and Facebook's IP in Ireland. Yeah. And then the company in Ireland licenses that technology and patents back to Google America. Like, I mean, come on. It's so lame. It's just lame. pay your taxes, everybody. Just pay your it's taxes. just pay, we have pay all your taxes. the money that we need in America. Like I How? know now I'm delving into the different the other podcast, but we have enough money. We just need the people to pay. I think the tax gap in the United States is like. 70 billion dollars a year it's that's not. the gap between what is owed and what is paid or what would be owed we don't need a wealth tax we don't need to like we have the money i mean we and also literally like, really, are not collecting it apple doesn't know what to do and google does not need to know, know what to do with their money i literally remember a conversation with the founders of google where i kid you not one of them said in a small dinner what should we do with the money yeah like literally they did not, this is, and this is when they like, only had 10 the billion in the life bank. extension. They were looking for ideas on what to do with the money because the money printing machine was going brrrr, and they're like, what should we do with, and literally that was a question to me. Our crowd is an investment platform that analyzes companies across the global market. Then they select startups with the greatest growth potential and bring them to you from personalized medicine to cybersecurity and robotics to quantum computing and more. In state-of-the-art labs, startup garages, and anywhere in between, our crowd identifies innovators so you can invest when growth potential is greatest, and that's early. Our crowd's accredited investors have already invested over $1 billion in growing tech companies, and many of their members have benefited from their 46 IPOs or exits. And investing early is what it's all about. You want to get in before everybody else is and then ride that company uh, up until an exit or an IPO. It's what I do for a living. So here's your call to action. Now you can truly diversify your portfolio by investing early in innovative private market companies at our crowd. Join the fastest growing venture capital investment community by going to rcrowd.com slash twist. That's O-U-R-C-R-O-W-D dot com slash twist. Another thing my brother said, because he probably should be a gaming analyst, was like, 
I'm just counting the seconds until Apple buys Sony. Like mm. Apple's just buy PlayStation now. Why isn't Apple more serious about gaming? But when you talk about companies who are sitting on crap tons of money, Microsoft was sitting on $165 billion in cash. So I'm yeah. sure they did the same thing. They were like, well, we'll look around, think about what to buy, and it'll be like not even half. Yeah, and, and Apple doesn't know what to do with their money. Apple does not know what to do. They're just like, yeah, because they don't want to buy things. They like to build everything themselves. So they buy back their shares. The money keeps piling in. And they're so out they of just, ideas, and they're absolutely trapped in the iPhone. I mean, they have They're a couple trapped. of ideas. I think, uh, honestly, I bet there are so I am many coming ideas around to house. Google ski goggles. Google ski goggles. I was skiing today. Yeah. And I was just thinking about those Google, because they look like ski goggles. And I was oh, looking at yeah. the mountain, and I was watching people ski down the mountain, and I keep track of my speed in an app called Slopes. And I'm like, I'm getting good now. I'm back on diamonds. I did 45.5 miles an hour on a run. Damn. Like, which is pretty fast and you don't get hurt i just I'm, got here i won't yeah i won't be safe <laughs> have like, fun. we gotta keep this guy in the game i'm just a mom anyway i was just thinking with those goggles i'm like trying to find this i was trying to find a run for my daughters the other day and i couldn't find this run and i was like if i had the goggles on when i'm looking at the mountain i would have seen the run because i would have just looked up at the mountain and be like it's over here dummy yeah but i'm like trying to find it on the map there's a thousand runs da, da, da. and then i could see my daughter's speed when they're going down the market mountain and i could also see because you know, I'm teaching them to do S turns in parallel, I could actually see tips and I could literally, I mean, think about this. If I was wearing I those Apple it. goggles, it could show me my daughters doing pizza slice or parallel skiing or S turns and say, tell them to lift the back leg, tell them to put their feet flat down, whatever yeah. it is. And this is the speed they're going. You may want to slow them down. They're, this is where they're at. I mean, it is going to be mind blowing augmented reality. I, I like think. Can't wait. It's going to blow away the iPhone. I think the iPhone is toast when it comes to these things. And that's why they're never going to do it. No, like they're the doing it. They're doing the goggles. that we don't no. have this is because these are from companies that make all their money somewhere else. No, no. It's coming because it's going to be $3,000 in that first dev kit. And then I think people will pay sustained 50% more for these goggles than they will mm -hmm. for an iPhone. And I think they'll keep their iPhone. So I think what's going to happen is you're going to buy both. Because think about it. The Apple store is packed. Apple comes out with the watch. Do people give up their phones? No. They come out with AirPods. People give up. Any nope. This is all accretive. I think the goggles people will use when they're skiing, they'll still have their phone in their pocket for the next 20 sure, years. I absolutely. think they'll want both. I mean, it's going to be accretive, not replacing. Until they can make absolutely sure that people are not going to not buy iPhones, right? They have what they're trying to figure out is how do we still make that? Because like, you're a businessman. If you have a thing that makes all the money. I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman. Pretty man. soon. Right. Actually, good point. You're the yeah. opposite. <laughs> of the person that I'm thinking of, because yes. if you're Tim Cook and yes. you're a publicly traded company and you are a cash machine and yes. you have no, you got to be careful with that franchise getting replaced. Yeah. And you have one th and you become fundamentally risk averse. And I think the reason like I don't think that there aren't good ideas inside Apple. I think there are probably a million good ideas a day inside Apple. And then somebody says, how does that sell iPhones? And you then know my best idea. You want to know my best idea? Yeah. Oakley buys. I'm sorry. Apple buys Oakley and yeah. Smith. That's okay. my best idea. I just came up with that idea. Or a producer did in the chat room and I'm taking credit <laughs> for it. But I mean, can you imagine mm -hmm. Oakley be amazing. or Smith, you know, in an Apple store? Just buy those companies. I mean, Do it I now. want this so bad. I, I don't I want to skip the goggles. I want the chip. Just put the chip in my eyeball. Absolutely. I want it all. Like, and That's I would buy the no, goggles I don't know if we're gonna make in a freaking it heartbeat. I don't think you're getting the glass. I don't think you're getting the uh, chip. I'm going to have to get Google life extension to live long enough to get the chip. Yeah, maybe we'll ha be like 80 years old doing this podcast and then still have that on. And then we'll have the chip. <laughs> I mean, this week in geatrics. <laughs> Can we do one question from our, we got one question from the noties. The noties feel a little neglected. I got some back channel. Like the noties feel, a, well, because I used to always take two or three questions and we've had so much show. We just always have to remember to take one great question. That's Can really we get true. one great question? Because Walton Dormish is here, you know. John Galt is here. OG Bob G is here. I know. I mean, we got some here. great notice here. Beard scripts and Zen profit. profit. G give it. You can ask. A, this one doesn't even have to be in the show. Anybody can give us just a question like about our personal. Uh, well, not that personal. I think I love Yogesh, who is sort of like our friend, but also like pokey. He's like he apparently at some point was calling us communist, communist, communists. <laughs> Commies. <laughs> Do you mean us? How are we commies? I just <laughs> I said know. let the companies run. <laughs> What are you talking uh, why about? Why hasn't Apple bought Sonos yet, actually? That is oh, the that's other an anti, question that That's an antitrust one. That's an antitrust one. It for is? Sure. Sonos is I so I think tiny. so, because it's the only hardware company that makes a competing product. 
it's just so tiny, it's not worth it for them. Yeah. But I love my Sonos, even though Sonos has screwed me. I'm like, I, I am absolutely upset at Sonos for this like Sonos 2 app and then breaking my system and I can only oh. use my Sonos roams if I'm on Sonos 2. And it's like so kludgy and they're like, oh, you, you bought new equipment from us? Guess what? You're screwed. Because yeah. now you got to upgrade everything else. It's the worst execution I've That's ever seen from any tech company. why I want Apple to buy them because they would have a proper UI. Although I am obsessed with, because I'm a, a frugal girl, I'm a normal compared to yeah. your normal friends. The IKEA line of Sonos what? speakers. Oh, what? yes. I don't know what you're talking about. Sonos is now in bed. I know because you don't what? go there. But no, Sonos technology. Does that mean in Italy it takes embedded. nine months to come to your house? No, Sonos technology is now embedded in a line of IKEA no, speakers. Oh, oh, yes. There's like a lamp that has a Sonos. No. How I do you pronounce this stuff? Symphonisk. S Y M F O N I S K. Symphonisk. Symphonisk. The Symphonisk is the stop. It's the Schutigurgen. I've got like four of them, and then you can swap out the covers. It's a shelf. You can get a shelf one. You can get. You can mount them on the wall. You. They have a lamp. Now you're just effing with me. Now I love it. Sonos is effing with me now. I. They have more than one. Your camera got all excited and died again. Oh God! Uh, you we just think it must be overheating. Oh my God! They have a ton of these. Wh- they have a ton of them, and they're the. Best. I didn't know there was a Sonos IKEA collab. That's going to get me to go fully... to Sonos and eat those uh, meatballs again, dude. Seriously, go to IKEA. I'm going to go to IKEA. Get some meatballs and get a bunch uh. of speakers because they're amazing and they totally work with the app <sighs> and you can tie them all together and then they play everywhere and then mine falls out the window all the time because I'm always like jamming it in this the window. This is so how I can my to wife pool. fell in love with me when we were dating. <gasps> I went to Ikea love. I went to Ikea with her. She bought mm-hmm. whatever she wanted and I put it together for you. If, this is just, if you want to have somebody fall in love with you, get on your hands and knees <laughs> and give up your weekend trying with to put this little... together. <laughs> and literally you're sitting there with pegs and wrenches and you're trying to put the stuff together. And I figured out how to do it. It's amazing. I bought additional like L hooks and S hooks and other things to reinforce how (laughs) that stuff is made. So I would put these little braces on them that made it more stable. If you buy extra braces and then you also mount it to the walls with extra braces. Mm -hmm. So you you build an Ikea shelf and it falls over and it's like wobbly and it's not perfect. Just buy these little L's and put them on the inside and then buy other hooks and mount it to your wall. All of a sudden, she said, you can get married. You All make of a sudden, a she babies. says yes. She <laughs> says yes. Or he or she or they. I don't know, you know, but that that's Ikea love for you. That's, I don't know if anybody, legit. that's my testimonial. Legit All right, Ikea Patrick love. asks, I, would ha- I wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for this pod, J. Cal. I'm graduating <gasps> college this spring and I'll be working for a New York City startup founder you interviewed. You're a legend. Thank you. Amazing testimonial from Patrick. What? All right, Pat. Thanks, Patrick. Well, uh, you're going to get some equity in this company, and it's seven percent of your equity you just shipped to Jake House. So that's fine. <laughs> Give us one question. Come on, guys. You got one question? Can you have just the next one, one up? It, it's from I, I, I'm denying Bob G. This one here. So oh. let's go. Oh, okay, you got Bob I, I like G's this just question, basically you're changing the rules, like having Shaquille o, Bo, OG Bob G is like having Shaquille O'Neal in the league. You're like too dominant. Go ahead, like Molly. You read the question. Can we have, Boguer Ayub says, can we have the next Google or is it too late? I think this is related to hmm. our question of size of monopoly. Like what, what can compete? Um, the answer is yes. Yes. Uh, there are new search engines coming and getting steam that will be subscription and not have ads in it and that don't track you. So you have DuckDuckGo slowly been growing, but there's a new one called, I think, yes or you. I can't remember the name of it. It might be you.com. But I saw there's a nut. Yeah, it's you. The private search engine that summarizes the web for you. You can add it to Chrome. I think they might be using Bing's, you know, um, uh, interface or something. Mm. You know, they have like an API. But I do think it's possible for a search engine to, to, to come out in 2022 that removes ads. Because right now you do a flight search, you do a product search on Google. The first 20 links are all ads. So there will be, it's, it's not going to be easy. That's going to be one of the harder ones to displace, but it is possible. What do you think, Molly? I mean, oceans rise, empires fall, right? The thing you don't, the thing you fail to understand about companies is that the bigger they get, the more unwieldy 
they get, the more tied they get to legacy systems, the more they get trapped in a cycle of how do we sell iPhones. Eventually, things get so big that they topple over or they get so big that things are uncovered about them that we hate. For example, the, you know, targeted advertising ecosystem. And so that gives someone an opportunity to sneak in and build something better that you didn't even realize you need. Or you'd stop needing Google at all because you get the implant, the chip in your eyeball, and it just gives you all the information as you Perfect. think it. There it is. And you're all right, everybody. Go. It's been another amazing episode of This Week in Startups. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.